still can't find no love. I can't find no love. I can't find no love. Somebody has to heal me, Lord. Oh, from my baby. So you released in your first record uh, called Have the City um, under the name St. Paul and the Broken Bones. So first of all, can you just explain how did you get up with that name? Um, well, we uh, guys give me a hard time. I don't, uh, I don't drink or smoke or anything. I wanted to be a preacher when I was little. And uh, so the guys kind of gave me the moniker of St. Paul. But I have a, I have, I curse a lot, so I, I'm not, I don't live up to the name quite as much. Uh, and then... Uh, Broken Bones came from a song of ours called uh, Broken Bones, A Pocket Change. So you, you talked about it. You wanted to be a priest when you were young? Yeah, so yeah, you were... yeah, 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 I did. I wanted to, uh, when I was, the first time I ever sang was I was four years old in church. And uh, I was, I loved church. I mean, I loved going. I loved all those things. kind of part of the culture down in Alabama, you know, you know, be part of church. And, and uh, anyway, and so, um, yeah, I, when I was about 11, I had a, I had a, uh, pastor come in and kind of groom me, and I would I would preach on certain you know it's on Wednesday nights and maybe a Sunday night. I didn't get Sunday morning, which was the main event. I didn't get to talk much, but, but I thought till I was about eighteen years old, that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. So it's uh it's not much different than what I do now. <laughs> so how did you discover that you eventually didn't want to be a priest? Like <laughs> I, I think I think as anything else, you know, Alabama's a kind of a especially where I grew up, very small town, kind of a tiny world view, you know. And so once that worldview kind of expands and you, you start thinking, well, you know, maybe I don't agree with this or that or this or that. And, um, and so you kind of, I just kind of fell out of love with it, you know. So how did you discover the rest of the, you know, like non-secular music? Like? When I was about 18, um, I, I, I knew I loved music. I loved listening to music. It was something, it was something I was passionate about, but I just didn't know, had no direction. You know, I didn't have a big brother or someone someone like a cool you know cousin or something or someone that was in the music that that uh, and so i had to kind of like explore my own my own, my own. and a uh, one artist that kind of opened up a lot for me was uh tom waits and i started listening to tom waits and uh that's a good mentor th th it was, yeah <laughs> and so that opened up a world to me that uh and so i just started this discovering it was kind of I, I it was kind of my gateway drug a little bit and uh, and so I I would be obsessed though I would uh, I would print out Wikipedia uh, articles of all these artists and read all about them all the time I was working at a construction job and uh, I would if it was a rain day I'd get to print out all these things and I would go to the restroom and read and, and uh, get music off the internet not legally. <laughs> I guess I should say that but uh, but I would I would uh, I would that's and so uh, and I would just invest a lot. I got obsessed with it. I'm still pretty, pretty obsessed with it. I've, I've read somewhere that you played in a, in a cover band, a Led Zeppelin cover band. Yeah. Is there was... any proof of there somewhere? That you can find? Probably. <laughs> I don't know where, but it's there. I want to listen. Yeah. To that. <laughs> we could probably do a main one now, but, uh, but uh, yeah. It... Could you? I, 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 well, I couldn't do it right now. I, that's that's uh, yeah. Robert Plant gets pretty high, man. He's he's no, he's a great rock and roll singer, yeah, great rock and yeah. roll singer. And you're really re revealing yourself uh, on stage. Like there's still kind of a some sort of religious aura around you guys. Do you feel that? Like, you know? Um, yeah, I do. It's it's bizarre. I, I get the same kind of energy or whatever and it, it's it's very weird you know we do a song of ours it's called broken balls of pocket change in the set and i have to get in a very weird headspace you know i get very like there's been times of crying and i'm like this is weird because like you feel like you're naked on stage and you got these people looking at you and and like it's it gets kind of intense but it's this moment that you're sharing with them and and uh and then sometimes people will be like Yawning, you know, <laughs> and you're like, oh, that just ruins everything. But uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it definitely does feel like a, I mean, it, to an extent, it's, it is kind of the Church of St. Paul and the Broken Bones, you know. Yes, well, we'll have the opportunity to see you guys because you're touring in France. Yeah, we're doing seven great. shows in France, Yay. which is awesome. It's, it's great to like, see a country instead of like seeing 
all right, we get to see Paris, which is a great city, but then you just, you leave Paris and you go to London or you go, it's nice to be like, all right, we get to see a whole country and kind of see, you know, different, different nooks and crannies, which would be nice. So you'll be in Paris on the 27th? I think so. March, I, think. <laughs> I know so. Oh, good, good. <laughs> so awesome. We're going to see you there. And thank you very much for coming. Oh, thank you really so much great. for having me. Thank you. Good thank luck you. with it. Right, thank you. Bye.